Monday? We can go Monday. Well, uh, and I guess we're live. Sportscast Safari podcast on a... I don't know what day this is. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This is the first time we've pre-recorded a podcast and uh, we haven't decided what day we're going to put it out. So Sportscast Safari podcast on a fill in the blank. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, a bit odd for me as uh, this is early in the AM Australian time, which is the total mm. opposite to what we usually do. So yep. feeling yep. a bit out of place, a bit out of whack, a bit like I haven't really woken up yet, but, you know. <laughs> hey, that's what I've been going through every every day for the last year. Is this and, what uh, you do every time we podcast? <laughs> no, I, I generally tend, have been up for a few hours, but, but yeah, okay, you know, no, it's something like that. So I guess to a bit of an explanation for people, we've the, the live podcasts are good, but um, I guess one sort of challenge we found, and if astute listeners might have noticed that we haven't done a podcast for a couple of weeks over Christmas because it obviously requires us both to be in the same place at the same time on the same day of the week every week. And those of you who have lives know that that can sometimes be a challenge. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we figured we'd um, we'd have a go at, at pre-recording, um, and yeah, should be good. Give us give us some more time. Hence why it's a uh, ten o'clock in the evening, uh, my time, and uh, bright in the morning, Adelaide time. So, mm. Mm. what's life like in Adelaide, Luke? Pretty good at the moment, actually. Um, we're we're doing all pretty well down here. Weather's great. We're about to come into a pretty big hot spell this week, I think. We're kind of like mid to upper 30s. So that just means we might have to be going to the beach every day after work, which sounds Bastard. terrible. Um, and then, yeah, we, you know, we just had Christmas and New Year's and lots of family time and hanging out and going for drives and, yeah, cool stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We're pretty uh, well placed with COVID as well. Uh, a bit of stuff's happening on the eastern seaboard, but nothing really in here. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're still functioning as per normal, as in cafes and meeting and working and not being stuck at home, miserable. Thanks, mate. I'm not miserable <laughs> for the record. Quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all, all pretty good down here. Mm, lovely, lovely. That sounds uh, sounds like paradise, to be fair. Mm. Um, actual paradise. It's yeah, not not quite like that here in the UK. Um, we are back in lockdown. Uh, it is winter. Um, it's very cold. Uh, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> I went out to the car today. I had to, to drive to, uh, to pick a few things up and we can, um, we can touch on what I was picking up uh, a little bit later, but went out to the car and had to scrape the ice off the windscreen. And that was at 1 PM. Uh, it was still all iced up and frosted over. <laughs> so, uh, I have no yeah. concept. I have no concept of what that would be like. My closest thing is sitting outside on the side of a hill at Tiger Tassie up in the hills, freezing my butt off. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was the coldest I've ever been. I think. <laughs> I think that was like I, two in, degrees or something. <laughs> you know, it's it's a different kind of cold. I think um, on these these bright when the temperature really drops low, you get these bright sort of sunny days and mm. you get the warmth of the sun. So even though the, the ambient is only, you know, one or two or three degrees, you're actually, as long as you rug up and you've got gloves and I mean, I won't lie, I'm wearing three layers of pants at the moment. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, maybe this so, you feel, so you feel like the rest of us after Christmas then basically. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. But I how, how do you layer three layers of pants? What in the world does that look like? Well, I've got my thermal my thermal underpants on, yeah. and then I had some kind of track pant type type exercise sort of pants uh, on over the top of that. So Jeggings. that was what I was. No, no, no. <laughs> they, they were my pick my get up for the day, and then I had to go down the shops, and then I put my coat on, and then I realised that having like a waxed cotton coat and then exercise trackies didn't really look that great. So then I put jeans on over the top, and then I walked. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, wow. this is winter life. Um, but yeah, we are back in lockdown. Um, yeah, their cases are running rampant. There's what sixty thousand new cases a day, or you know, it's it's been in the high fifties, the low sixties the past past few days in the past few weeks, and um, yeah, showing showing no signs of slowing down. Um, mm. But you know, well, hopefully, if actually we are. happens, and you guys stay locked away and get we back to some form of get back <laughs> to some form of normality <laughs> later in the week. We ain't going anywhere for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. So road trip plans gone, all gone. gone. But just Even as well, local stuff. Yeah, yeah. But just as well because you've had some, uh, 
get into it later. Now there's no time like the present. <laughs> I haven't really, um, really put it out there yet because um, I just, I guess, don't really want to say too much until we know what the outcome is going to be. But the Boxster, my beloved Boxster, which you'll see in Sportscar Safari in this issue, which, by the way, sidetrack, my copy's finally arrived. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> I did see that. I like, appreciate it. I appreciate the, it. The actual snail mail with COVID. Yeah. What was ages. that, like seven weeks, eight weeks or something like something that? Something like that. And the, the worst yeah. bit was, and I guess this is part of this day and age of technology and integration and everything, like the tracking wasn't working. <laughs> it was like all the post postal services were like, nah, we're not going to give you tracking. Nah, oh, nah yeah, it's whatever. No. And it was, it was, it was like, you know, a bit of anxiety there of, you know, yeah. what is in the world is going on? Where is it? Is it ever going to get there? Did you actually just forget to post them and then just said you'd posted them and then just blamed it on COVID? Because I feel like COVID is the best <laughs> convenience excuse that everyone has for anything. It's like if you, I don't know, manage a department in a big company and you have massive losses, you oh, COVID. <laughs> COVID happened. Sorry, COVID, you know. Um, anyway, but. A little, little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't post it the same day I got them, if that's what you if that's what you're No, no, no. But no, so back to what I was saying, The um, mm. my, my beloved Boxster, which is in SES, if for those watching video, um, I'm holding up a picture of it, but basically it's the car I picked up, well, last year now, um, and kind of got back on the road and did about 5,000 happy miles. It became uh, a little bit flooded in a storm on the Festivus. Um, for the rest of it, us. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Festivus to remember. 23rd of December, for those that don't, don't watch Seinfeld. Um, but yeah, I had was doing some work to it. We'd sort of, I guess, you know, for those that aren't, aren't regular avid listeners, um, picked the car up. It hadn't been driven for three years. Got it back on the road with kind of minimal expense. Did five thousand miles in it over the summer. Decided that it was, you know, I want to keep it. It's, it's a good thing. So decided to then invest more money into kind of going through it and doing the, you know, all of the the rest of the preventative maintenance that you should do. You know, water pumps, belts you know, gearbox oil, all, all, all the, the stuff. And, um, yeah, borrowed a workshop space, which was very generous of, um, you know, a colleague to loan me, uh, to let me use some uh, part of part of a, a workshop space. And out, out of the cold. In, out the of the cold. Yeah, because this is the thing in the UK. Like, nobody has a workshop. Nobody has a garage. Everyone mm. works on their drive. And the thought of doing this in, in the winter was just, just untenable. So, well, yeah, I mean, I it's just like in Australia, we're pretty lucky that, like now, if you're doing this over here, we're kind of 30 degrees and mm. sunny. And if you needed to do yeah. a couple of day project or, you know, a three or four day project in the drive, yeah. you're not really overly stressed nah, about it. You can fine. just do it. Mm. But when it's when it's 1.5 degrees in rain. When you're like, scraping ice nah. off at 1 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Nah, not keen, not no. keen. So, um, no matter how many layers of pants you have on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, you Rolling can... around in the pod. Oh. Oh, nightmare. <laughs> On the gravel so, drive. <laughs> yeah, the things you do. You know, I, I massive sidetrack again, but sometimes you do see people doing things and you're like, you must really love X, Y, Z. And it's not just cars. It's house renovation projects. It's, it's all sorts of things people do in the weather because, you know, people that boaties, boaties, yachties that are, you know, doing these big boat projects and they're out in marinas oh, and docks right. and winter, you know, I don't know, fixing anyway. So, yeah, so we had it up mm -hmm. on jack stands and – um and it started to rain. It was sort of on the 23rd. Um, I had some time off off work. So I was, you know, spending a good bank of time to, you know, mm. get it, had it up on jack stands, had the whole front of the car. I've had the radiators off, had the air conditioning condensers off to drain the coolant. So basically she's going nowhere. Like she's, she's, she's dismantled. She's not going anywhere. And, um, and the rain comes and oh, it's heavy rain. You're like, ah, oh, but you know, if we get heavy rain all the time, it's, it's fine. And then, um, the kind of the car park area at the front sort of slowly starts to fill up and you're like, okay, yeah, it's a bit, bit splashy, but it'll be fine. And then um, gradually starts to run into the workshop and we're going, okay. And, you know, there were some other cars there as well. And so our thoughts, you know, I called a couple of people and we're like, hey, might want to come and come and sort of see what we can do in this situation. And um, they came down and our thoughts, of course, were to the cars on the ground. And, but by this stage, the car park at the front was, was flooded. We, we couldn't get anything out. It was, it was too deep. You know, we're talking sort of six inches deep and we kind of thought, well, the best bets for the cars are, are, are inside. So we kind of 
ran around this industrial estate and we found some sandbags, liberated them from another business that had gone home. So we, we didn't pull them from their doors. We didn't pull them from their doors. No, they had them on a pallet. They had them on a pallet in their car park and they were long gone. So right. we, we, we sandbagged up the door, but it, it did nothing. And then, um, yeah, it got higher and higher. And then it got to the stage. Uh, our, our like daily drivers were kind of parked out the front. And then we were like, it was sort of getting to the bottom of the brake rotors of the cars. And we're like, okay, we probably should move them, move them you out. Know, and... I feel like there's a better way than mm. sandbags. Surely there's a what, better way. Like, why is sandbags the thing? Is that the best thing for people to do? Because it seems like whenever there's, it doesn't really help. I mean, it's not ideal, but they're quite fast and easy to stack. It's not, you know, I'm sure you could build a build a brick wall would be better, but <laughs> not quite as immediate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trying to trying to set some mortar in six inches <laughs> of water. Good luck. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So we're running around and um and got to the stage. It got to sort of about eight o'clock at night, and the water was kind of up to the middle of our shins. And it was at that point. We just kind of went. There's literally nothing we can do. Like it's 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 it was still raining heavy. In, interesting in the UK, like it, it rains a lot, but it doesn't ever really rain that heavily. It's you know short bursts and a lot of misty kind of crappy sort of just grey drizzly sort of stuff. But this was like a proper North Queensland sort of just sustained for hours mm. and hours and hours and hours. Which which doesn't help when you're already so wet and the ground's already wet. no no it's been raining for nowhere to go nowhere to go and and all that and um. Yeah, so we kind of left and, um, you know, drove home. And I've not – the drive home, it's about half an hour from where I live, and um, I've not seen it, the fields, that that wet. It was it was pretty torrential. And, um, yeah, then, of course, the, the starts coming through the news. There's flooding in the area and blah, blah, blah. And, of course, could, didn't get much sleep that night going, oh, crap. And, um, yeah, the next day we couldn't get in in the morning. It was the whole, the whole sort of area was flooded. There was a, a car dealership on the corner. They lost, I think, 30 cars, 25, 30 cars or something they, they lost. And um, we couldn't as in like get lost, in. As in, like, Four swept flooded. away? No, not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> not that bad. Um yeah, and then and then we couldn't get in. So the sort of that half that whole day was sort of going, what are we going to find? And then by sort of three, four in the afternoon, we were able to get in, and it was a case of sort of wading through the water. You know, just oh, so cold, just <laughs> splashing, <laughs> and it was still sort of six inches deep at this point. And we got mm. in, and um, and yeah, the um the, the box to didn't escape un unharmed um the water had got pretty in. high up on jack stands it was pretty high on jack stands which which if it wasn't for that it, it would have been just a, a send it to the skip job yeah. but but so at the moment we're kind of working out what to do i mean i've you know been talking jordan roddy who we've had on the podcast here before i've had a bit of a chat to him about various options and i don't know maybe we can save it maybe maybe it's just a bad idea and you should just run run for the for the heavens but then i i think and luke this is what i haven't told you yet i i <laughs> have cause to believe that that some water may have got into the engine um so yeah yeah that's that wouldn't be ideal water inside of engines don't less than ideal yeah. um so on the weekend i go out and dump, dump the oil which is which is frustrating because it's 10 liters of brand new mobile synthetic <laughs> high quality oh, did you, oil did you do oil first when you... oil first yeah <laughs> i just filled it just filled it. i haven't even and um we checked today uh, checked the dipstick and I, and I know and i know where i'd filled it to because you know like i'd obviously dipsticked it and then we yeah. checked the dipstick and, and it's high on the dipstick so <sighs> so um i guess and, it unless up. somebody's and, messing with you and just went and added oil to it just to be <laughs> If they did, I would welcome that. Um, I, I would welcome that. So yeah, more, more than the alternative of fun, because because mm. when uh, usually when there's when there's a large amount of water in the engine, it usually goes to the bottom. Oil goes to the top, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been told basically drop the sump plug out and then see, see if comes. water comes out first. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, oil, yeah. Oil, oil oil always sits on top of water. So if there's a large amount in there, you'll find it pretty quick. So yeah, watch your space. Um, so yeah, that's been my. Oh, so actually, dude, actually, LS, just, LS hey, swap it. LS swap it. LS swap it. Dude, <laughs> I've, I've got, I've got. I have the most tolerant girlfriend in the world. Yeah, I have fiance. 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 That feels weird saying that. <laughs> I have. I have. You'll notice there's boxed seats behind me here. Oh wow. Um, 
the carpets are, are hanging in our lounge room to dry because they've <laughs> they've been in in the warehouse for two weeks, but it's just so moist and wet for there that there's it was still wet two weeks later. So yeah, yeah, they're yeah. hanging up to dry. We've got the hard top in the in the the yard over there. We've got the seats here. It's um it's a bit of a hot mess of Porsche bits, but anyway, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. So <laughs> I don't At know. Least there's not fuel leaking out of a Vespa, like you know, it could be worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I know we're just I'm just talking that you know the, the the best part this has unlocked is is and I'm sure everyone's like this. I've had you know your your brain goes you know what are we going to do and you're like do, you know I think my first preference is to try and fix the box so that's what I'm going to try and do. But if I can't, what do we do? Get another boxer? <laughs> do you? I've had all sorts of ruminations from should we drop the engine and send it off and get it rebuilt, which probably you know. It's not something you'd do normally, but in these circumstances, maybe you could you do it. To, if if that was if that was an option, right? Mm. Would you need to send it off to be rebuilt? Yeah, there's. Oh, I mean, may, maybe someone like yourself who's who's really switched on might figure it out. That there, there's a lot of special tools required, apparently, and there's a lot of very complex right. Swiss watchery kind of stuff going on. Okay. Maybe someone like yourself could fix magic, could, <laughs> magic, just lots of gears and bronze bits and and special cams. And, can you, can you and, imagine that? It's sitting there and you hear it's not turned on, nothing's happening, but you're hearing this. What is that? Little elves inside, just yeah. So um, no, apparently, I mean, look, it's the same. It's the same engine really it's the same design as in all 996 911s not the gt3s it's not the mezga but like any you know 996 career yeah, if you found it's water in it mm. geez you can almost like <laughs> fill the thing with oil so it's overflow with oil drop it all again clean out clean out the bores and give it a crank <laughs> Oh, don't get me wrong. At this point, if, if we th if we find a bunt butt ton of water, I'll definitely try that because what have we got to lose? <laughs> like, I mean, it's toast anyway. So. You could you could you could well maybe yeah. If it's if it's been sitting there rusting, yeah. Mm. Like if if everything if it started to eat away hard inside, then yeah, problem. Yeah. But then but then there's there's a bunch of companies over here that sort of specialize in rebuilding early nine nine six boxed motors. It's a couple of grand. It's it's not yeah. cheap, but you can do it. So that's one option to sort but of. But also, really so if it's just like if it's like being water damaged, arguably you might not need to replace a lot of parts that would usually need to be mm. replaced. Like if yeah. things are good service order and it just needs like the bores are a little bit pitted from rusty pitted. stuff or whatever, like just needs a clean out. But yeah, anyway, yeah. So that's one option. That's one option. The second option, which I don't know, I, I, I like, I don't want to have a, to get an MX five. Like, like I don't <laughs> want one, but. You can't knock it. And my thought is that, okay, if I can't boxster anymore, I don't I don't know if I could go through the whole mental anguish of finding another boxster because, you know, I, I dodged a massive bullet with this card. There's so much that could go wrong. And mm. I, I don't know if I could I could go through doing that again. Um, but the MX-5, make a bit of a track thing out of it. You know, an NC, I'm thinking with a hard top with R32 GTR wheels because they look good on everything and they fit. <laughs> And well, are know, they getting expensive now, though? MX fives? No, no, not MX five. <laughs> no, I was like, what do you, what do you mean? They're both practically disposable <laughs> no, at this point. GDR yeah. wheels. No, there's a bunch over here for four hundred pounds. So a set seems to be the going rate. Well, that's pretty. Have cheap. we have we just unearthed a a, a lucrative uh, market in sending uh, GDR export. wheels back to Australia? I don't know how you go with shipping at the moment, but I thought um like Lucky GDR wheels not. were were a bit bit sought after. Ah, well, lucky we're not live because if this is a thing, we can bleep this bit out. Um, <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> cut it out. Just uh, we just um, completely no, scooped um, ourselves. There's two or three sets on Facebook Marketplace over here for about 400 pounds a set. Seems to be the rate. So oh, 400 pounds a set. So it's what 700 bucks. Oh, uh, there's R32 GTST wheels, which are pretty similar. 500 bucks. Okay. So yeah. Oh, here you go. Set with no tires, two grand. Really? Mm. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. four hundred pounds plus shipping—that'll be about the same money. That'd be so, you know, no, no, grand. Money. What? That'd be grand. Yeah, plus you, shipping. You... No, no, no. Four hundred pounds is like six, seven, seven hundred dollars, seven hundred and fifty dollars. A couple hundred bucks shipping. Oh, it's not five hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, here's another one. Oh, this one hasn't sold. They look like they're a bit. Oh, they're a bit manky. They're like all rusty and stuff. Sixteen hundred bucks. Still, I need to look mm. into this. <laughs> okay, we might have found something. Here. <laughs> or Andrew goes and buys. Or instead of Porsche parts, there's just GTR wheels GTR everywhere. Wheels everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Tell comes home. Good news. <laughs> <laughs> Done Homer. I quit my job. I quit my job. <laughs> We're now in the GDR wheel game. <laughs> it's not a silly thing. But yeah. Yeah, I thought they were starting to get expensive here from what I'd seen about the place. You know, things on like drift sales and things like that you see them pop up. But well, I'm could definitely gonna investigate this. But um anyway, so I'm thinking like maybe MX5, some basic mods, brakes, just conies, Recaros, like some nice seats and some belts, and go and hit up track days go and just drive all the tracks take it to mm. spa take it to nevergreen just you know snedderton's not far and just have something because as much as like i i love the boxer and driving is great it's someone in my financial position like i'm always a, just a little bit afraid of it like a little bit afraid of really really revving it out because when you're at like you know six seven grand in third gear and you just think if this thing <laughs> let's lunches. go i'm lunches I'm, I'm i'm in some trouble but an mm. mx5 mate, that's practically free free motoring at this point like like they are um yeah over here at least because they they rust out so quickly anything mechanical, mechanical stuff it's yeah. two 200 quid 300 quid and you can swap a new motor into it and you can just go and belt it and have some <laughs> the, fun the, v, the vt commodore of the uk <laughs> <laughs> they are they are 150 and, bucks for an engine <laughs> oh maybe three four hundred three four hundred you know yeah, but, yeah. but but still, I'm kind of a bit like be afraid of a box to or just have something really cheap and fun and bulletproof and just go and just use it mm. and, and do everything with it. I mm. don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Interesting. I will fix a Porsche if I can. I will fix a Boxster if I can. Yeah. But if I can't, it could be. A... Well, I guess, yeah, you don't know. The weekend will provide answers. Mm, it will. It will. So anyway. Mm. Speaking of so new cars. Of speaking yeah. of new cars. Singer. Yeah. The, what do they call it? The uh, ACS. ACS. Is, I feel like that's something. What is it? I don't know. I feel like that's something else quite notable, but it's probably just some IT acronym that I've got stuck in my head. I was going to say. So it is the... <laughs> All terrain competition, all terrain study, competition study, which enables off road racing. <laughs> Their press release is, is quite hilarious. <laughs> all terrain competition study enables off road racing. <laughs> I don't think it does because I don't know what that costs, but I can guarantee that whatever you spend on that, you're not going to go on off road race. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, I mean, I hope someone's crazy enough to do it. I really hope someone does, and they will have the support of the world if they do. Oh, can you imagine? But still. Like, imagine, yeah. Anyway, it's a pretty cool looking thing. I mean, 10 points to them for creating something unique and amazing again. Like, mm. I, I, in this day and age of all these hyper cars and these, these, you know, people buying cars, not for really enjoying cars, but for a status symbol, mm. uh, to have someone go to the lengths like this to create, an amazing almost work of art machine yeah. you know purpose built race car it is just cool like it's awesome. the attention i just love the fact that you you think everything 911 has been done you, you think it's all been done like what <laughs> else can someone add can bring to this party i and mean it has done. arguably been done before but, but not just, to that standard no nah, no way like yeah oh very cool I um, it's got eight dampers total. So like, just looking through the press release, it started off as a nine six four nine eleven. Mm -hmm. Uh, five way adjustable dampers, eight dampers total. So jewels is that jewels on each side? Yeah, and then That's like proper. on the fronts, there's only one set of springs on the damp. Like, like yeah. on the coil struts, there's like one spring on mm -hmm. one of the dampers, and the other one's just a damper. Um, mm -hmm. and the rear's got double it's got um sequential dog box all drive it's pretty cool it's got a, oh, i'd love to i'd love to see the the stuff that they've got in there so got long range fuel tank it's got two full size spare race wheels good work 
which is pretty cool. Um, plus, it's also got in there rehydration system for driver and navigator. Oh. So I wonder what um, and state of the art GPS race navigation. So that'd be all. Like I can't imagine what a singer rehydration is. Probably like a reverse osmosis unit in there somewhere or something. What a Put whatever water plant. you want. It's going to be a plant at the front. <laughs> yeah, so when you're on the bar, Baja or something like, you just pour whatever water from every anywhere in there, and and off it goes. That'd be pretty cool. Amazing. Um, oh, what a thing. What a thing. Uh, so there's an actual yeah. There's a couple of little interesting notes. I love the clamshells on it. How it's got yeah. the group B style, like the whole front and rear of the of the body worker is, is, you know, the one piece and the whole thing just arcs up. I wonder like, how much is actual 964. I would wager a bet and say a fair bit of the chassis would be. Yeah, you can, when, uh, because, I mean, when Singer make their classics, like the, you know, the, the traditional style of Singer, they look like a 911, but they basically cut all of the body off and re-graft carbon body yeah, yeah. back onto it. And, I mean, they choose to do it to graft panels that kind of look like 911 panels. But, I mean, you could graft anything you wanted onto that. So but this is, like, complete, yeah. like, front and rear bespoke suspension and pickup points and everything. So, like, it's mm, probably, true. like, the... the the driver's footwell or something and a part of a pillar maybe that's that's left and the, and, and the vin plate the fin so, plate yeah. so technically it's a, res a restored car it's not a not a new car it's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty pretty crazy i mean yeah one question yeah Have, i want to know about how a singer and, and i don't really personally know anyone that's commissioned a singer and i'm, I'm gonna guess and say not many people do but mm. You ship them, say for like taxation reasons, mm -hmm. you ship them a really crusty 964 from Australia that's worth 100 grand or 80 grand or 70 grand. Mm -hmm. And they take that to California and then they rebuild that car. And, and I've heard the cost of a singer really is, is seven, eight hundred grand, whatever it is. It's, it's you know, it's a sizable chunk of coin. Can you then freight that car back into Australia and since the numbers and everything all line up and just get it back into the country? Or do you need to pay luxury car tax? Is it classed as a new car? Uh, well, uh, Ryan knows this. Did we speak about this? Ryan, in the yeah, Did we speak. <laughs> that, was guessing, last, that was last year. I'm guessing, no. Yeah, we must have. So, Paul, have I missed that? Well, no. no, we didn't. We didn't discuss exactly. We might have danced around, around it, but there bit. is, yeah. there is, you know, with knowledge comes power. There is yeah. some, uh, there is some fees and some things that need to go on. But yeah, like yeah, I mean, it might be that you need to pay on the cost of the restoration or something like that. You don't have to pay yeah. for the cost of the base car or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there, the there are probably the some. There'll way. be. Yeah, of course. There'll be something where it will be like you've imported goods valued at this, so therefore it's this. Even though you technically own it, you've spent money on it. It's money stuck. on it. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's, a not like you, it's not like you've taken the car out and driven around and then brought it back. It's... But still, it's a slippery slope. Like how much How much is a paint job on a car? You know, it could, could be 500 bucks. It could be yeah, 50 grand, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. But still, ACS, of... yes, very cool. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I, I just, yeah, attention to detail on that thing looks unbelievable. And, yeah, it's just crazy. And he's bought two. The guy the guy commissioned two. Mm. You know what I thought was very cool about that is the fact that whoever commissioned it, they're being very, very tight-lipped, as you would expect on whose car that is. What I think is very cool is that he has not closed the door to having no more built. So if you want one, you can uh, go and order one. Right. Which is very, very cool of whoever that person is because most of the time when these custom one-off cars are built, that is it. They destroy the moulds after it's done. Well, you're, you're, paying, you're paying, you're paying for, for the development of the car. Mm. So, you, you know, you don't want someone else to yeah. effectively get that for nothing. Nothing. And, and you kind of, you've paid for it, so you want to be exclusive. Uh, and yeah. I guess I feel like a lot of those people, will, you know, that's what they want. They mm. want to be the only one with that. Yeah, I get it. But this guy has been like, nah, come on, come off. You've got the money, which 
maybe no that's the maybe, about the, price. <laughs> maybe that's the difference with the Porsche community because a lot of those one-offs mm. that are that crazy are not Porsches. You know, they're like a mm. an Inferino or a Bertone built Ferrari or Alfa or mm -hmm. some Italian mark crazy thing or like you know a one-off Lambo or you know something like that or yeah. Koenigsegg or whatever like whatever. Pagani like like the crazy crazy yeah even the Paganis that are sent back right sent back and yeah. built the order um maybe that's something different with the Porsche community where it's you know a bit more of a hey we're in this together we're not exclusive we're you know mm. we're, we are you know all wanting to enjoy the same thing we're all in this together, <laughs> you and me and every family. Anyway, no, but point being, to be fair, though, what would yeah. be better than having one of those is if, like, five other people all had mm. one as well. Like, that mm. would be rad. That would be rad. Actually, actually, I'm going to slight sidetrack. How good this year Dakar rallies have. I was just about to say that. <laughs> classic. That classic. classic. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not they're not fast. Like like they're they're they're, they're not not quick at all. But I know. Don't, don't care. care. Don't care. It's very cool. Yeah. Yep. Mm. I mean, yeah. Uh, to be able to have those cars back out and running again, because again, like Dakar is is probably you know one of those type of rally events where you know to run it is such a huge thing. So most people who are running it have been yeah. doing it to win and you're not going to do that in a classic car. So um, it's a lot harder to get out and, and do that event in, a, in mm. a classic vehicle. But, yeah, what else do you use the vehicles for that have been in Dakar? Yeah. <laughs> not much. So it's really yeah. cool that it's gotten to the stage now where those um, cars can come out and run again and, it's yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So what have you been belting around in? I saw a, a sneaky Instagram story post. How's the older, how's the old 105 going? Yeah, it's great. It's been good. Um, I hadn't had it out for a little while. Um, I've been uh, doing finally finished work on the 166, which has been good. Um, so that's out of the way now and uh, I can get the, gdv out easily and keep it packed away and nice so mm. yeah just been bobbing around in that for the last week or so a little bit um a nice. few little drives here and there took ruth in it last night for the first time she hadn't been in it yet Did she hate it no she thought it was cool but i was like i was like really excited I was like, this is really cool yeah. she's like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i hate how they do that <laughs> it's like do you know Man. what you're doing and this is really cool you're so lucky and it's like Oh, yeah, it's nice. Do you remember one time? And and I know I know like passengers in in cars at track days is much more common in the UK than it is in Australia. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's not that many opportunities to take people for laps in Australia. And I remember doing that. Got you know Chantel, my girlfriend, out there at the time, and we we did some. I was like, yeah, like let's go and do. You know, got her in, and then and then we did like about one lap, and then we went for like lap two, and she's like, are we going around again? I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the point. She's like, <laughs> but we've already been here. I'm like. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we come back in. I'm like, whatever, just get out. <laughs> Let me have fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty fun. No, but she did enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe she, it was, it was like, it was a nice night, like quite cool. Like you could, you could wear pants and there was a nice cool breeze and it wasn't overly hot. She goes, oh, no. are we taking that tonight? It's not, it's not too hot, is it? <laughs> For the car. <laughs> what? Mm, no, it's fine. Like, don't, don't stress. It'll it, you just, cars still drove in forty degrees. You've only totally reminded me. There's the <laughs> attitude over here to classic car owners in hot weather is hilarious. Oh really? Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and there's one dude, and it was just this Triumph Herald, and we had to make like a half an hour drive, and I was dropping it over, and I was like, yeah, like I'll bring it over, you know, later today. It's like, oh no, 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 man! It's 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 too hot. Like the thing might overheat. Like you know, we just just keep it. You know, we'll, we'll get it in a couple of days. And it was like thirty, mm. and I was like, I was just talking to him, like, mate, I come from a place like I've driven my Fiat when it's like forty six. It's fine. Like like they're fine, <laughs> and, <it's, laughs> and it was fine. But but seriously, when it's over thirty, they just they don't. It's like no. Nah, yeah, not. but uh, again, I kind of see that because how many like UK cars that came over here overheated like into australia like the you know the 
have cars with cooling yeah. issues and things like that. I mean, oh, if yeah. the car's serviced and it's okay, yeah. I think you're all right. But, yeah, but, you have to have a functioning cooling system. But when you do, they're fine. You don't need a functioning cooling system over here. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's so it. That's cold. the point, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, the couple of weeks a year that it might be hot. It's like I was reading, you know, before the, the flood, obviously, in the box store, you know, changing the coolant was one of the jobs. And I was reading mm. the process of bleeding the system, which being Porsche, it has a very thorough, you know, method of starting the engine, letting it fall down, topping it up, letting it, you know, then revving it to sort of 3,000 every 10 seconds for like a minute and then checking it again and blah, blah, blah. And then it goes through all this, you know, big process, takes about half an hour, this top process. And then it comes to this bit, it says, you know, wait till the thermostat's open and sends, you know, let it idle until it sends the water to the front radiators um, and that will fill the radiators up. And then it said, you know, the thermostat's open at 88 degrees or whatever it was. And I'm standing there going, dude, it's like three degrees here. The car <laughs> idling, it's not going to get to like 88 degrees. I'm like, it's going to take me like three hours of idling this thing here. <laughs> Just to get, get the fans to turn on. Get like, out there with a hairdryer, starts yeah. warming up the engine. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Pulls boiling water over the thermostats trying to get the yeah. yeah. I was literally like, how am I going to bleed this thing if the thing if the thing won't even send the water down to the front radiators? I'm like, hmm. Anyway, well, I guess that's a good. Thing, right? I guess that's a good thing about being in the UK is that everyone actually puts coolant in their car to stop it freezing, yeah. antifreeze. whereas yeah. antifreeze stuff. Whereas, yeah. like, there's quite often times in Australia where people just keep shoving water in the car. Mm. Do you like, like demineralized or tap? Demin. Yeah. You know, well, I'm, I'm sure there are people that put tap in there. Yeah. But yeah, like demin. Yeah. You know, of course. But as, soon, as soon as you, as soon as you get anywhere hot, it will just evaporate. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Um. Uh. What else has been yeah. happening? Oh, uh, I guess I can I can talk about this because I would have already showed the person that it's for. <laughs> I, I built something else again. Uh oh. <laughs> because idle, hands, idle hands are the devil's work, Luke. <laughs> well, idle hands at two a.m. in the morning. Oh, the devil's work. <laughs> um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I was really upset. Well, I, I kind of upset. You know, when you put a lot of work into something, you give it away, and then you're kind of like, oh, I mm. wish I could have one of my own. Well, I, I I built Buzz a model. Buzz for Michael Buzz. Michael Buzz. Buzz. Mike Mac underscore eighty six or something, I think, isn't it? Um, That's the Adelaide Rally, the HKS livery with the SCS stickers on the door. Yeah, so I built the twenty sixteen version of version of his car for his thirtieth birthday in one twenty fourth Tamiya scale. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Went pretty nuts on details. Very cool. Looked epic. Um, but was a bit sad because I put a lot of work in that. I do love that car. And, um, you know, because I've worked on the car, I've been involved in the car, it's a mate's car. Like, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And it's kind of, a, it's kind of become its own thing now. Mm. Um, and Someone built a model of it in, um, what's that game? Gran Turismo. In, uh, Gran Turismo, yeah. So you can go and drive actually, it in GT. I actually built, yeah, some, you can drive it in Gran Turismo. You can go find it. I'm mm. actually halfway through building a, a one in R Factor. Yeah, cool. Which anyway. is Crack wheels and all that kind of stuff too. But anyway, <gasps> idle hands, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, when you can't sleep and it's midnight, 2 a.m., what do you do? <laughs> Build Hot Wheels. Wow. So what we're looking at is a 164th Hot Wheels of the Busby Reed Adelaide Rally 2019 SCS liveried RX-7. That yeah. is insane. Yeah, so if you're Absolutely not if you're on audio, and you might need to jump on and have a watch or maybe by now put it on the Instagram. But, yeah, I basically – Wow, that is ridiculous. Because I had some leftover decal paper and I had the design files from the first model I built. I went, you know what, I can – I can, and I had all – because I did all the stickers for Buzz's car too, so I had all the design files for that. So it was really easy. It was pretty quick. It didn't take that long. How um, long did you spend on that? I hope Ruth's not listening, but um, 20 minutes. Wow. 20 That's minutes. Yeah. Oh, so Amazing. Um, <laughs> no, it was probably total like maybe four hours, if that. 
Like it was pretty quick, really, when you think about it. I mean, it was it wasn't like four hours straight. It was like mm. um, get the model, pull it apart, sand it down, spray it mm -hmm. white to work with the decals better, um, and then make the decals, apply the decals, and then make the packaging, which wasn't too bad. That's very so cool. I, I basically, yeah. Yeah, I, you had to so, do the packaging and then put it back in. And, like, I, I yeah. made sure that you cut it all nicely so that all the all the <laughs> writing is still on there so it looks factory and then glued it all back up together. So it's in there now. That's so good. It's not coming out. Oh. But you're going to have you're gonna have to make another one now. I know. I, I did think about this. Because <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to have to – I can't not show it to him, but I'm going to show it to him. your own back. <laughs> Because they have to show it to Buzz, and then who doesn't want a Hot Wheels of their own car? Oh. Yeah. Mm. May maybe, it will, maybe it will be a you have to come help me build it thing. Are you taking requests? Am I taking requests? Yeah. If, like, anyone out there wants a Hot Wheels of their car, you'll, you'll, you'll whip one up for them. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> the most expensive Hot Wheels ever. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. The, I guess the thing about this one, and this is – kind of the um the thing with it is that it was more of an opportunistic thing it wasn't like you know i went out and made a hot wheels of a car that didn't exist like you know the mm. car existed it was there yeah. like yeah. you know i didn't change the wheels the wheels are like the normal wheels that came with the car like the model and stuff mm. like that. it's not like i've gone if you bizarre. painted them white they almost would look like nah i thought about it but then i went that's not what a Hot Wheels is. True. The wheels have to be wrong. You're right. Yeah, the wheels, mm. sometimes they are right. Like there's a couple of the Premier Edition ones that have, or that I've got up on the wall, um, have like proper wheels. Like mm. there's a 190 DTM and there's like a 32 GDR HKS race one and bits and pieces yeah. that have like pretty close wheels. But for the majority of the normal Hot Wheels, like, the wheels are wrong. They've always been wrong. They're always yeah. different. They're always yeah. off the shelf, standard. Okay, well, mm -hmm. what are we going to put on this car? Okay, those, you know, that one there was fun. Boop. <laughs> so I kind of thought about that and then went, nah, like that's just yeah. not for this, not for this type of thing. Can not, I tell you something? Not very quick 2 a.m., you know, buildy type thing. I'll tell you something really embarrassing. I don't have a single Hot Wheels in my house. What? I don't know. I just realized that. I don't know how that's happened. I've got a lot of other detritus of all manner. But do I they not have them wheels. in the supermarkets? Like, oh, no, they do. I, they do. Oh, you except, just avoid them. Except, you know what? I, I must admit, I I really want them to make a Hot Wheels X19, Fiat X19. And for some reason, every every time I go to the supermarket, I go and look at the Hot Wheels and I go, oh, oh. But I like, there's don't no you X19. Have to, you got X19s at home, don't you? Yeah, not a Hot Wheels one, though. The closest they came is they made a Safari 914, which that new one, which does look kind of like an Oh, are you talking about a modern day one or like an older one? Modern day one, new one. Yeah, yeah, no, they don't. No. Uh, this, this is rapidly turning into a Hot Wheels podcast, but that's nothing wrong with that because they're... Well, they're hey, this one. Oh, no, see, this isn't even Hot Wheels. I've got, I've got it off the shelf. This is, a, this is a Corgi. I've got a Corgi. I think I've got that. Oh, you know what I didn't buy? I found that corgi in at, at one of the shows. And I it was the roof a bit. Oh. It's had a rollover. And they do that in real life. It's got Probably. fit and hoya. It's got tag hoya on the side. Oh, that's pretty dope. And the red interior with the white paint. That's very cool. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I found one of those and it was towing a Carlsberg speedboat. Should have doesn't have a tow bar. Mm. That would be cool. Oh, could we put a tow bar in your X1 then? Uh, no. no, having said that, there was, <laughs> there was an X19 getting around Adelaide with a tow bar probably about 10 years ago. Mm. There, there was one. Can be done, has been done, shouldn't be okay. done. Yeah, probably not. Hey, other exciting news. Um, I dropped off my first roll of film to get developed. Oh, that I shot. And uh, it was blank. Oh, no. <laughs> did, you still, did, did you still get charged for the developing? Oh, yeah. They, they, what they do, the lovely guys at Hutch Photo. And, did uh, they laugh at you? They no, laugh no, at no. no, no. Yeah, probably. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, I felt, <sighs> I felt not quite hipster enough to be in that shot. 
I went in there and there was dudes with like long hair and little squiggly mows and oversized shirts and skinny mm-hmm. jeans and stuff. And I, mm-hmm. I kind of felt not quite hipster enough in my work IT gear. Um, and then, uh, no, no, not the workers. The workers were super good. I'm talking about some of the clients that were there. Um, uh, and oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. anyway, yeah, so dropped it off, got all excited. They're like, oh, look, this, this film is a different type of film. We're going to take us a bit longer to process and so i was like oh yeah great okay cool a couple of days later get the text <laughs> but um because they they scan them and put them to dropbox but uh uh your your film at hut street photos was blank show this message to Steve, <laughs> a free free replacement film to offset the cost of scanning so that's cool oh, i mean like you lose you lose a few few bucks for like yeah you know wasting their time but they give you a yeah another bit of film which is all right yeah, so um i actually bought while i was there another set of uh ilford xp2 for black and white what did you do did you load it incorrectly oh did probably not, not roll on to the yeah it mustn't have rolled on i mustn't have noticed or whatever ah what did you I do is there anything good on there uh, or should, like, should there have been i don't know I, pro- I probably took too long to use it anyway there was like a bit of like baptism christmas couple of car things gone to the zoo ah. like nothing exciting um so uh when i was there anyway i dropped it off i bought uh some ilford xp2 400 black and white i don't i reckon i've got some of that somewhere yeah Hmm. cool anyway so i bought another roll of that so i put it on the other night before i got the message and then went oh no maybe like i loaded it terribly and then i checked but i don't remember with the first roll double like visually when i was you know Mm -hmm. moving to the next frame if the if the return wheel was rotating or not i don't remember that in my head like Mm. when i was shooting i don't remember looking at it as i was like flicking through yeah because you just kind of like take a shot like i don't remember watching it so i went back and i've probably burnt another roll or another couple of exposures on this one yeah I opened up the back in like semi dark, saw it was rolled on properly, closed it, rolled it, made like shot roll, like went yep. for another few frames and made sure it was rotating properly. So yep. I should be all right with this one. Fine. Rookie, Goodbye. rookie errors. Joys of That'd film. That'd be as bad as when I was a kid, though. Yeah. It's happened. So this has happened to me one other time in my life and I was devastated. <laughs> <laughs> so little young Luke um, borrowing. Uh, dad's Olympus OM1 at Avalon Air Show in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. That's, Luke was that's... so excited that dad gave him his camera. <sighs> Luke was so excited that he was taking pictures for the whole day. <laughs> dad went got and developed. No bueno. <laughs> <sighs> you got to learn these lessons, you know. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. Um, yeah, so I think with this role, I might, I might try and get bang through this one a bit quicker and go get it mm. developed. Um, yeah, just make sure you're on the right path. But that's kind of the fun, you know. I've had definitely sometimes a film where I, when I come and I'm like, I know this is a good shot, and then you get there and it's crap, and you're like, <sighs> but then the flip side comes in waves. You yeah, know? you know what? So, I've kind of enjoyed the waiting part of it too. Like even even though nothing got developed and it's taken ages and all that stuff is lost. Well, you know, that stuff's not lost because I shot digital at the same time. So okay. I basically yeah. was like doubling up yeah, while I was there. Because I, <laughs> yeah, anyway. And um, the, the waiting has kind of been good. It's been therapeutic to not have to, like, mm. it's not instant. Yeah. No, no, that's the best part of film It is just that you don't. Oh, I, I, love, like, I, I was like sold out of film pretty much. They had oh, not much out. film left. Yeah. It's and there was like, up. when I went in there, there was like, five or six people that were there and like it was it was mm. busy and this was yeah like a afternoon like it wasn't I, it? i've got my my camera just up the back there and that's got two-thirds of a roll shot on it and i could only really account for probably five of those photos mm. it's gonna be such a surprise when they come back and um <laughs> yeah see. Oh, that's right <laughs> Except the only problem I've got is that the guy that processes my film is the guy that I used, is Nigel that I bought the boxer from. So mm. the next time I take him a roll of film, I'm going to have to tell him that the car he bought and used was flooded. So that, that's going to be a bit of a hey. Say love you. Say love you. Might want to mm. buy it back for parts. <laughs> I don't think you will. <laughs> he um, sold it for that very reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
yeah so i guess what's uh what's what's the year look like for us in wrapping this up because we're probably hitting mm. the time well my my year i can i can um i can be very brief my year looks like freaking nothing at the moment <laughs> <laughs> um we're we're in lockdown again and you know what to be honest they've they've sort of said we're in lockdown until uh probably march um there's i think the australian government came out the other day and said that no one from australia is going to be flying to the northern hemisphere until 2022 so that means i'm not home until probably this time next year at the very earliest very um, earliest if the if very earliest log of people and mm. vaccine works and, all that and then it's stuff. a matter of money yeah. you pay the money um money so yeah, in terms of that, look, I, it's all up in the air. I mean, I mean, there was supposed to be Sunday scramble at Vista Heritage this weekend, which has been cancelled. Um, Goodwood members meeting is in for March, end of March, but Good who knows? Luck. Um, yeah, all up in the air really at this stage. What about you? Obviously, you've got Adelaide Rally coming up again. We've got yeah. Adelaide Rally coming up again. Um, well, not again, but well. Well, it is coming up again. Well, it kind of feels like it because we did yeah, so much yeah. prep work for it that it's kind of like another event almost. Yeah, <laughs> Even yeah. though the event didn't happen, it's like, oh, doing you it again. Be like, who, who won in November? <laughs> <laughs> the only disappointing, the only, well, not disappointing, the only sad thing, it's not disappointing, it's totally understandable, is yeah. that there's only going to be one event this year and then we're mm. back again for 2022. But, um, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's doing that, um, obviously working on the next issue of the magazine, which is going mm -hmm. to be cool. So I, with you being locked down so much, I'm probably going to have to go out and do some more stories, which is cool. Yay. Um, yay. Uh, which is exciting. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I dare say, and I reckon we should put it out there so we're actually held accountable for it and do it, is that to run... We haven't, looked, we haven't released the podcast yet, so we, we could bleep this bit out. Out. No, no, no. <laughs> along, along with our oh, R32 no, GTR no. wheel bracket. Yeah. <laughs> wheel boys, wheel boys. Um, uh, but anyway, is to run a burger meet again in 2021 pending okay. COVID disaster. For those people who have not been any given reason followers for years, what is a burger meet and why should someone come to it? No, you, I feel like you should be explaining that, not me. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've we've spoken about burger meat before, so hmm. it's just it, it is basically the event to be to in the Adelaide car scene. That's a pretty bold claim. I'm glad you're the one pulling it off. I, I, I will I will happily say that. <laughs> happily say that. Like they were good um, days. They were good good days. They were great days. Like you know, looking back you know, on it, if, we were, if if I was to look at it now and go, oh yeah, I'll do this this way. Like if we yeah. were to sit down and go, hey, I got this cool idea to do this event, we wouldn't have done it. I don't think. No, it was not a chance now. But <laughs> now if I we knew what we knew now, <laughs> I look back and go, I just look at some of those photos, and yeah, you're right. And yeah, look at these. Maybe it's COVID, and we're just not used to being in crowds. So I don't know, but like I look back and see them. What did we have? Like seven hundred cars or something? Six hundred. The last one, yeah. Yeah, and then and then there's like you know probably what a thousand eleven hundred people, and you just go. Boy, out of our minds. Yeah, pretty much. So let's do it again. Uh, so yeah. anyway, I want to I want to do that again because we are nuts. Um, mm. uh, yeah, I want to do it again, but this time, yeah, I want to start planning a bit earlier and actually mm. have a bit. I guess some of the problems that we've had before is a bit of lack of control and a bit of lack of um, planning, organization. Planning, yeah, organization um, and planning. Oh, yeah, and I think you know the format and put it out there if people have got any suggestions, but I'd dare say we'd probably and for COVID it'd probably work too is we'd have to move to a ticketed system yeah. um, maybe get people to prepay for food so that because here's because here's the problem yeah. and I, I just think we need to explain that um, my idea was just hey everybody let's turn up and, and have a car meet which is great when you've got you know, sounds 20 wicked. people <laughs> sounds wicked. what we kept but even finding the first one was more than 20 people yeah it was like we thought 40, it was going to be like half something. a dozen or something yeah yeah, yeah like, like, like 60 like 50 people 60 so the problem the problem is, is, is that was pretty people. coffee and cars days though that it was, was like it was it was, it was like, OG cars and cars and burgers but so yeah. basically the problem is with the catering in that it is important and traffic management and everything if you don't know how many roughly how many people are coming it having is people lined up down an 80 kilometer road 80 k's an hour road oh line. dude and, and then so, so we, yeah, we no 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 I was just do you remember did the the guy we the the the, the one with the loss with our friend rosk stepped in and helped us out that took our money and then 
bugger mm. off into Mm. Yeah, and, and anyway, what what you get is is you know we 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 take a guess and say we think three hundred people are going to come. So you go to a caterer and say, hey, we want you to cater burgers for you know three hundred, four hundred people, and they say great, and then they take a deposit off you to no, do they so. Say great, and then go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, they cater right. and they cater for like one hundred and fifty people, and, and then, then five hundred right. turn up, <laughs> <laughs> and then this happens year after year after year. <laughs> and um, eventually, I think we've we just like I we loved the spontaneity of it and the spontaneous nature of just a just a kind of a rock up and see who turns up. But the reality, unfortunately, is that it just doesn't work like that. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and I thought that was a really cool thing. But I yeah, we're gonna have to go to a, a ticketed system where yeah, um, you know, you pay for your food before you come or you know, something like that, maybe have some provision for a couple of people to mm. rock up if you know a couple of mates in a car or something that haven't mm. haven't pre bought, but um. You know, you might have to move to something like that so that, yeah, we can gauge numbers and cater appropriately. Because I think one of the good things about that event too, which, you know, in some of those large-scale events kind of disappears, it is about the people and the cars that are brought, not mm. the cars that are invited. So we don't yeah. really, I mean, we spoke to our mates and we're like, hey, you know, are you bringing this out? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just didn't know what was coming, which was half the fun. Like, yeah. You, know what people are going to bring you didn't know if someone's going to come up in a race car or someone's going to come up in old 1920s dodge or someone's going to come up in some custom built crazy show car like you had no idea which was i think the crazy fun. like i love I'd, I'd love standing at the front even though i yeah. had doing traffic management stuff but you're just like what the? you're just like what's that what's that what's some what's that? dude <laughs> turned up i remember penny Hill there some dude turned up in the you know 70s i don't know what the type it was but it was genuine like late 70s american cop car like left hand drive the black <laughs> and the white with the siren the lights the whole works i and remember that yeah i was like that's and he had the the aviators on i reckon and it was full on anyway, anyway. so 2021 burger meat is back after a quite a few years actually the last 17 one. 17 would have been the last one was it would have been 17, yeah. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. 18, 19, 20, 21, four years. Jeez, it's that four years. Wow. Scary, isn't it? Yeah, so anyway, anyway that'll be back. Um, uh, even though Andrew won't be able to make it back to help, I think if we get on it early mm. uh, and call in some mates and be all over it, we'll be good. Yeah. So I'm out there to get that done. Um, uh, and the other podcasts still coming mm. maybe a bit more haphazardly maybe not so frequent depending on how andrew goes over there and what work looks like and what it's like <laughs> over here. yeah we'll it's see. a bit of a hard one it is hard like it has it was like during when we were all locked down it was pretty yeah. easy to run um but yeah i think we'll yeah we'll just do them a bit more spontaneous i think mm. whenever but we've got you know, we'll get some more guests still, on. We've got still, some good ideas. Yeah, yeah, we've got some good guests that come in, some good people mm. to, to go through. So, yeah, that'll be exciting. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I've got to do some more car building this year, which will be good. And um, get yourself out driving and enjoying. So, yeah, yeah, keep enjoying, keep enjoying Andy's 105. <laughs> what do they Thanks, say? The best, the best person's classic car. The best is someone else's classic car. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, Andy, uh, I did save Andy money though. Yeah. I have saved him money. Oh, uh, it was cheaper to insure in Adelaide than Melbourne. So, oh, there you go. Happy days. Go Adelaide. <laughs> go Adelaide. <laughs> so, if there's anyone else that needs classic car storage, <laughs> and you just and, have to put up with ten thousand k's a year of, of mileage. Yeah. It's basically the deal, isn't it? Free storage, yeah. but ten thousand k's a year. Ten thousand k's a year. Yeah. Anyway, cool man. Anyway, well, thank you, babe. It's Thank you. Fire podcast. Um, for those we need to, we always forget we're terrible at selling ourselves, so we need to plug our pluggables because we never plug our pluggables. You plug your pluggables. Kind of the point of this podcast was to plug our pluggables, and then we never actually <laughs> plug our pluggables. Anyway. Talk about talk about Hot Wheels and things. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You see me holding up now. Sportscar Safari issue four. It is in the shop. Sportscarsafari.com forward slash shop. You will see that both of us have them for the first time ever. That's quite amazing. Um, the <laughs> shop, get your range of stickers, hats, no hats, stickers, no shirts, hats. jumpers. There might be hats soon. I don't know. Check back in a year or two's time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, I want to do hats. I want to do hats. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
yeah, but but sticker shirts, um, the magazines are there, all the magazines, and um, yeah, keep an eye on the channel. So now, yeah, we'll we'll see you next podcast. Thanks, mate. See you, people.